Hi friends, welcome to lecture 78 in our helicopter dynamics course. And today we are going to discuss dynamic stall. I am Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. Now we have seen that typical static stall takes place in an airfoil section because of flow separation. And essentially, if you put an airfoil section in a wind tunnel and keep increasing the alpha value slowly, then after a point you will encounter a value where there is going to be flow separation. And this is the point at which stall starts taking place. So this value may be about 12 degrees for most airfoil sections. Now, in some cases you have unsteady flow. And unsteady flow means that not only is alpha present, but alpha is a function of time. And because alpha is a function of time, alpha dot and so on are also present. And so that leads to unsteadiness. So this is a situation where the airfoil is going through some kind of oscillatory motion. We'll discuss that in more detail in a later lecture. But right now, let us presume that this is happening. And this is happening because the pitch motion or the blade is going through some kind of motion where essentially an alpha dot is being created. So what's this going to do? It's going to create transient lift and nose down moments, which are much greater than static stall loads. And therefore, this is the negative part of dynamic stall. But one of the positive parts of dynamic stall is that the onset of the static stall phenomena is delayed. That means your lift keeps going up for a long time after alpha has exceeded the static stall angle. And the rotor is capable of generating much higher levels of thrust in maneuvers due to dynamic stall. And this is something which is even used in fixed wing aircraft during maneuvers. You essentially see the pilots being able to generate much more lift out of the flight vehicle than would be the case in normal static situations. So let's look at the CL alpha and CM alpha curves here. Now you can clearly see that in dynamic stall, the CL goes up all the way and this may go to 20 degrees or more. And then you get this dramatic fall here. There is a attachment of the flow again and you keep going down like this. So this depends on how your alpha is cycling with respect to time. And so you essentially have this kind of hysteresis loop here. Now the important fact is that the CL value can be much higher than what is actually obtained in static stall. And also instead of taking place at something like 12 degree or 15 degree, you have delayed this fall in lift to 20 degrees or, or greater. So this can be used by the pilot sometime for maneuvering, but you also need to keep in mind that the loads being generated at these points are very large. And so you need to design the structure for these loads because dynamic stall may be introduced in different flight conditions. Now, if we look at CM, CM goes like this, and then there is a huge fall here. So there is going to be a very large load generated here, which is going to impact the pitch link, and it's going to come into the control system. Then it's going to go back. You get a positive value here. It's going to come back here and keep going on like this. So again, a hysteresis loop type of situation is there with the possibility of very large torsional moments being generated at angles in your stall. And again, these angles are greater than what you encounter in static situations, much more than the 12 degree. It's somewhere around 20 degrees or 17 degrees, which is taking place here. So these are the stall situations which typically take place in unsteady flow and represent dynamic stall. Now let's look at the CD. CD value goes up like this, and then it starts going up very substantially at somewhere around 15 degrees plus. Then it again goes down, the attachment takes place, and then again it goes on like this. So again, a loop type of situation is there. Now here, of course, you can imagine that this point where the CD is rising dramatically is going to coincide with a huge increase in profile power and profile drag. And that's going to require substantial power being produced by the rotor to even sustain this situation. So again, this is something which is going to have an impact on 
how much the helicopter can take in terms of this kind of maneuvers and so the power must be substantially high if the vehicle is going to be able to go through this maneuver you need to consider the possibility of drag reaching levels such as 0.5 and so on in terms of the drag coefficient so essentially what happens with dynamic stall we clearly saw that a much greater degree of alpha can be there in dynamic stall we also saw that dynamic stall causes very high loads typically in the form of not only lift and drag but especially in the form of large pitching moments and that moment can be very deleterious for the helicopter rotor system so we need to keep that in mind whenever we are designing the rotor blade also there are these hysteresis effects and that's something to consider modeling of dynamic stall is rather difficult the graphs i showed you before are typical experimental data they are derived from experiments there are certain models of how to deal with dynamic stall typically they are based on some kind of conglomeration between experimental results and theoretical constructs so that's how we try to model dynamic stall in general but of course this is a phenomena which has both its positive aspects and its negative aspects it's the product of the fact that alpha is a function of time there is unsteadiness in the flow and therefore alpha dot alpha double dot and so on are present so that was a brief introduction to dynamic stall i will come back in a video sometime soon this ends lecture 78 see you in my next video